So good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you who are joining us now on Facebook. Welcome into our Sunday school. Man, I wish you guys could be here with us live sometime because as we start our discussion at 9.30, uh, we can talk back and forth and really get into some intimate talk about what our Sunday school lesson is about. But you're here now, and we're going to make the absolute best out of it we possibly can. My name is Nathaniel Ruthers Jr., and I serve as superintendent of our church school. Our pastor is Reverend Kenneth Smith. This morning, we want to welcome you into this third Sunday in Advent, singing a familiar Christmas hymn, page 59, O Come All You Faithful. that 
you wouldn't stay on the cross. Lord, you loved us so much that you wouldn't just die and be entombed in a grave. Lord, you loved us so much that you got up on the third day with all power in your hand, with all love and mercy to your undeserving children. But you graced us with it anyway. And God, we just say, want, to, want to say thank you. Thank you for being God all by yourself, for loving me in spite of me. Oh God, for giving me one more chance. Lord, watch over Trinity. Lord, you know what we stand in need of. Lord, you know that only through you would things be better, and only through you would things change. Oh God, we must first seek ye first. Oh God, and turn over all our cares and all our worries and all our burdens and everything that we have over to you. You'll strengthen us and you'll carry us through. You wouldn't bring us this far just to leave us. Oh God, we look forward to where you would have us go. And Lord, we humble ourselves to your service. So God, just use us as you see fit. But oh God, I command unto you as well to do just what you said you would do. That if we would call and ask anything in your name, that it shall be. And that through you, you will make all things possible. So God, be with everybody under the sound of my voice. Use them, keep them, strengthen them. And let them be mindful that you are the reason for the season. This we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, watch us and keep us is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Saul 
was coming to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, My fellowship. And he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? that thou should look upon such a dead dog as I am. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants, thou, still, thou till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits, and thy master's son may have food to eat. But my family shall, thy master's son shall eat bread all the way at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As my fellowship, the king said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of, my, one of the king's sons. And my fellowship had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto my fellowship. There's one more verse, because there's 13 verses in this chapter, but they only printed 12. Let's read 13 just to have it. It says, so my fellowship dwelt in Jerusalem, and he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both of his feet. Thus the reading of God's word. You know, life is unpredictable. You know, I, I, I always love to share a lot of stories about my grandma. You know, we call her Big Mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of my stories, you know, uh, we tell about all the good experiences I had with my Big Mama. You know, y'all had great experiences with your family and stuff like that. I had great experiences with my Big Mama. But some stories we have, Brother Casey, we, we don't like to tell those stories outside the house, you know. Some, some, some stories you don't really want to share. But I want to share one of those stories quickly today to kind of make a point about this lesson. You know, my grandmama uh, had a mama who was my great-grandmama, and we just don't say that she was something else. Okay. Uh, you know, she, okay. she, she, she was something else. You know, yeah. my great granddaddy had yeah. gotten in some trouble yeah. down in southeast uh, Alabama. Uh -huh. Okay, and 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 he, he they had to get him up north. Uh -huh. They had to get him up north. So he ended up in Massachusetts, no, living up there. And he'd send back word, you know, to my big mom from time to time. But him in his absence and his wife still down there in the country, uh, she found another man. Uh -huh. and, and, and when she found uh, another man, that another man didn't want no child already. He wanted to make his own children. Uh -huh. and, and, and so eventually he and my great-grandmama moved to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they left my grandmama down there in the country. Oh, and But y'all know, uh, back then especially, they be began believed in the village. You know, so my aunties, or her aunties at yeah. that time, they, they looked yeah. out for her. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and her uncle, they looked out for her. And they made sure she had everything she needed as best they possibly could. That was, you know, until uh, she decided she was grown enough to be on her own and do her own thing. And at the ripe old age of 15, she came to Birmingham, well, you know, and got her a job at the YWCA cooking for the people there. And she lived in one of the rooms at the YWCA. And she was able to be there and basically start her life. Okay? Now, 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 now my, my big mama was one of those persons, especially when I was growing up, because most of you may know when I was about 12 years old, I moved in with my grandparents. I was supposed to be staying there for the weekend, but I didn't leave until I married Joyce. No, I have so, but my big mama would be there. She would, you know, she had a way of, of, of making sure that we know the truth. She wanted to tell you the truth no matter how ugly 
The truth was, she wanted you to know the truth. She wanted you to know what the story was about. And at the end of it, she would always say the same thing. She said, but that's still your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's still your mama. That's still your brother. That's still your cousin. Whoever it is, it's still that's still your family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Still your family. That's the truth, but that's still yeah. Yeah. your family. Yeah. So when I was little, my grandmama would send for my great-grandmama mm -hmm. to come down to stay with her uh -huh. in the summer. And I think I told y'all that she was something else. <laughs> you know, and when she comes up, Big Mom said, okay, y'all go in there and give her something to drink. I said, you don't want to go in there. Because <laughs> she, she wasn't always nice. Yeah. She didn't have that spirit. Like, my, my Big Mama had, a, had a, the gift of hospitality. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be around her. Everybody wanted to share. Everybody wanted to be blessed. We, I always feel the same way yeah. about my great grandma, but my big mama said, "But that's still yeah. your great grandma. Yeah. 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 Go yeah. give her what she need. Go look out for whatever it was if she asked for. Bring it to her." My grandmama wanted her mama to be blessed by her great grandchildren and beyond, regardless of what had happened that got us to that point. Right? Didn't really matter. We still family. You still yeah. look out for each other. Yeah. So it, 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 it made sense to me. Right. You know, yeah. and like I tell people all the time, you have to learn how to get past what has happened, you know, and how you got there, and just embrace the fact that you still got family. That's right. That you still love each other. That, that's a powerful story to remember. And when she died, we, we all, big muscle, okay, everybody, let's go. Going We're going up here for the funeral. The and film. then she looked at me and my brother, Charles, me and my brother Charles and said, and y'all sing it. Oh, Lord. And we sang at the film. That wasn't no question. That was a, that was no question. That was, a that was a blessing for me. Yeah. That was a blessing for me. So what's a friend, right? What's a friend? Let's, let's be honest about that. What's a friend? A friend is somebody that you love, that you have mutual affection for, that you care for beyond the boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife type relationship. Somebody that you love. They say, oh, a friend is the family that you choose for yourself. Yeah. You get to be that. See, David and Jonathan in our story today were friends. Yeah. See, David and Jonathan were, had an enduring, life-changing, life-driven friendship. Yeah. They were close. They were tight. Okay? Now, when you know the real story, though, you say, well, maybe it should they have been tight? I, I, I don't know. David was a little boy who had found Jonathan's dad's favor when he killed Goliath. Mm -hmm. He was just a little ruddy, poke, little no good shepherd boy, stank, yeah. hair ain't combed, you know, ruddy, just nasty little boy who got lucky with a slingshot, mm. if you will. Yeah. Saul bragged about David. He said, oh, look at this boy here. This boy came in. He didn't have a scared bone in his body. And he stood toe-to-toe to, -toe to Goliath. And he took Goliath out. And Jonathan, his son, was sitting there listening to his dad and dope all over this little boy. And, I, and we talked about during Sunday school, well, you would think Jonathan would be jealous. Why are you talking about this boy all the time? And I've been out here commanding your armies all this time. Yeah. I've been taking folks down all this time. I've been winning battles all this time. You ain't never bragged about me like you bragged about David. Yeah. But yet, Jonathan didn't get jealous. Jonathan embraced it. Jonathan said something that sticks with me and that I hope sticks with you when you look at Sometimes you can look at folk and you can see the hand of God on them. Lord have mercy. You can just see that it's something about that person that God is using that person to deliver a message, to make a change, to make life better. God is using that person. And David, as you were, Jonathan recognized that in David. He says something special about David. So I ain't jealous that my daddy brags about David. Matter of fact, I want to be close to David. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those. When I when I see God using you and making life better for you and, 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 and uplifting you even in bad situations, not only do I want to celebrate you, 
I want to get close to you too. I want some of that. Yeah. You know, some yeah. blessings have a way of kind of rubbing off, you know, yeah. kind of yeah. leading it right. off. So sometimes I, I, I want right. to be a part of that blessing too. And that's yeah. what Jonathan was. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan said, I want to be a part of that blessing. Think about this though. Jonathan was the oldest son of Saul, which means he was the rightful heir to be the next king. That's right. That's he right. was the rightful heir. And if not him, he had two more brothers. So if he didn't become king, maybe his next brother. If that brother didn't become king, then maybe the next brother. So it's at least three chances that the kingdom is going to stay in the family. Yeah. During a battle, as they continued to fight against the Philistines, things changed. Though. Yeah. All three brothers were killed in battle. And during that battle, when Saul looked up and he saw the enemy coming at him and they were going to take him out too, Saul said, wait a minute, he asked his servant, why don't you go and kill me? Because I cannot let them capture me. That's right. I cannot let them take over me. I cannot let them have that pleasure. But the servant said, no, Lord, I love you. Mm. I love you, king. He said, I'd rather kill myself than kill you, and he did. Then King Saul, as y'all know, he fell on his sword and he killed himself. Yeah. Something just happened. Mm. All the people who would be king are no longer here to be king. Mm. So guess who became king? King David. David. Some people end up elevated in positions that maybe you would think they had no business being in that position or they were not the next person who should have been chosen to be in that position. They were not the heir apparent, but life changed. And all of a sudden, they ended up being the one in charge. Ain't that something? Yep. They ended up being the one who led the way. David ended up being king. But the thing I love about David is David didn't get swole. He didn't get the big head because he was king. Yeah. He didn't he didn't all of become all of a sudden become Mr. Big Shot because I'm the king. He didn't decide that it's all about me now. Right. Since I'm right. the man in charge. Right. Right. He started using his power, his authority, his position to be a blessing to yeah. other folks. Yeah. He started helping other folks along the way. Now don't get me wrong, when he became king, all those people who had wronged the Israelite people, oh he went and found all of them. He said, yep, you want to move with the Philistines. We're going to take you out. You're either going to die or you're going to become a slave. He went and found the next one. You're going to die. You're going to he conquered everybody who had ever mistreated the Israelites. And he did. Now, he a bad man because when you start looking at people taking control in government and organizations, whatever the case may be, and they start arising like that, you start bowing down to them. You know, you start submitting to them. He said, no, I don't necessarily need all that. I just want to be a blessing to somebody else. That's right. And he did. So he administered justice, right? But he also administered a different kind of justice. Mm -hmm. The other kind of justice was doing right by folks that you can do right about. You know, sometimes we come into each other's lives. We don't know how we ended up in front of each other. Was it because of the church? Was it because of the neighborhood? Was it because of the job? Was it because of a friend that knew a friend and you all showed up at the same Christmas party? Mm. I don't know why you all met each other, but since we met since each we other, met each if other. I can be a blessing to you, okay. I ought to be. Yeah. 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 If I see that I can help you along your way, I ought to do it. Yeah. I ought to do it. Right. David understood that. And he tried to do that. And one of the things he wanted to do was remember where he came from. That's right. He remembered back when he was just a ruddy boy. He remembered when he was an outcast and the only reason he was liked was because he threw that rock and took down Goliath. He remembered Jonathan had befriended him when he didn't have to. He remembered that Jonathan said he loved him and he didn't have to. That's right. He remembered that he said, I love you too, Jonathan. If I can ever do anything for Fire. you, let me do it. That's it. That's Sometimes it. you won't get an opportunity to do something for the one that you love and that you made that relationship with. But sometimes you can do something for their children. Yeah. Or sometimes you can do something for their cause That's or for their right. community That's or for right. their things that was important to them. You may not have been able to do it for the person directly, yeah. but you can do it for the other people who makes yeah. it difference. David said, is there anybody... And Saul's family left us all dead. All three boys dead. The family was destroyed. Is there anybody left? 
And somebody said, yeah, well, he had this son. Mm. You know, y'all got that son in y'all families, too. I got, you know, got, got, you know that son. You know that yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we don't yeah, talk yeah. about yeah. You know, We don't talk about them outside the family. Matter of fact, we don't even bring them up. We conveniently forget who they are because maybe they got off on drugs or maybe uh, they got in a lot of trouble with the prison or, 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 or maybe they got some kind of sickness that we don't like the public to know. You know, some, sometimes people used to have certain family members that they keep locked up in a room and you don't necessarily get to go meet them That's right. because they, didn't, they weren't the best in the family. They weren't the ones you wanted to bring out. But David said, you send somebody out there, they say, yeah, he got a son. And his son is crippled in both of his feet. He is not good for himself or for anybody else. He lived in a poor land where he can't even provide for himself. Yeah. He can't even uh, uh, get vegetables to eat. He has no animals because he has nothing to feed the animals with because there ain't even no grass. There's no vegetation. Yeah, but he got a son. You know, he down there if you want to know about it. And David said, I want him. Go get him. Send for him. Go get him. Yeah. Get him to come up here. Because I want to be a blessing to him. Now, my Mephibosheth, who is this son, he calls my Mephibosheth. My Mephibosheth comes on up. But you know, my Mephibosheth kind of wondering, like, what the king want with me? What he want with me? You know, <laughs> does he need somebody he needs to take out? You know, did I do something wrong? What, why did he do? Now, I'm going because he's the king. Because if I don't go, he's going to cut my head off anyway. <laughs> so I'm going. But what am I going for? Little did he know. David had already decided, because I love your daddy, I don't have time to evaluate your circumstances. No, I, have I don't have time to evaluate the fact that you didn't finish school. I don't have time to evaluate the fact that you got in trouble along the way. I don't, I don't have time to evaluate all that. You, all I know is I want to bless you because I love your daddy. Yeah, yeah, kind of like the lesson I told y'all earlier today before, uh, when we started going through Sunday school, you know how I was blessed. Yeah. yeah. You know, to get yeah. a ring for my wife because yeah. of somebody who knew my dad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't even know her. Don't know nothing about her. Couldn't tell you what her name is right now, but I'm thankful I was able to get Joyce a ring. Yeah. I was able to get it again. All because yeah. she knew my dad. Yeah. Sometimes we are blessed not because of what we've done, not because of who we are, not because of what we achieve, but it's who we are connected, connected. to. The connection is what makes the difference. That's right. It makes all the difference. Yeah. And we have to be able to realize that if you can help somebody, help somebody. That's right. But also realize that some of the blessings you've gotten is because of a blessing of somebody else. Okay? David was great and powerful. Great David had made this pact with Jonathan. He said, I'll always be there, and he tried his best to do everything he could to be there. Oh, no, he couldn't be there for Jonathan because Jonathan's dead. Okay. Yeah. But he could be there for, for Jonathan's son. Mm -hmm. You see, justice is more than doling out punishment for the wrong that people have committed. Justice is also about making things right simply because you're in a position to make it happen. You know, I often say to people, when they ask me how I'm doing, I say, oh, I'm doing perfect. You know, and people have talked to me, they laugh, person yesterday said, well, perfect. I don't know about all that, but I'm all right. I said, well, I actually do know about all that. Mm -hmm. I said, because I opened my eyes this morning, and I woke up. I looked in the mirror, and I recognized me. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and stuff was moving and I was touching people, that meant that life must be perfect because God is still in charge and he's allowing me another chance. Another chance. Talk, life is talk, perfect. That's it. He gives you the opportunities up to you to make something out of it. That's right. yeah. Yeah. So if God wakes me up every day and he gives me an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else, yes, then life is certainly yes, perfect. A lady said to me yesterday at graduation, you know, she said, you know, favor comes upon a person. Lord have mercy. Comes become, upon a person, especially if that person is in a position to help somebody, and they do. Mm. Amen. And somehow or another, that blessing rolls right.
right back around to them. What a blessing it is to know that David administers justice, but not only does he administer justice, he is also kind. What a blessing. This is our Sunday school lesson for today. I hope that it has been a blessing unto you and unto your soul. We'll prepare ourselves for morning worship with our pastor, the Reverend Kenneth Smith. God be with you.
in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And our final scripture will be Luke 2.10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
the Lord? I mean, really love him. More than anything. Huh? Yeah. The Bible says he don't, we won't have no other God before him. Amen? Song says, Lord, I love you more than anything.
is that day when we celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace. During the Advent season leading up to Christmas, our mind should go to a peaceful place that only the Lord can take us. During this season, our mind should be on sharing with others and, and being thankful that the Lord has blessed us in a way that he has. This season is one that, that love is expressed and, and, and people tend to, to see a little more Jesus in us than they normally see. But these days, what, what we expect or anticipate during this time of year hardly ever comes our way. My wife and I began this Advent season celebrating our love for one another for our moments to only be shared with more school shootings and increased crime rates. I think there seven, seven deaths in like five days in Birmingham at, at, one, what, one, at one point since our anniversary. And, and, and we've been having to deal with, with political decisions being made that hurt people. In, in this season, in all seasons, we find ourselves in the middle of turmoil while we serve a God who sent us his son that, that we may have peace, that we might share love, that we may have hope, that we might find some joy. Jesus came to bring joy to the world. Yet we live in a world where it appears to be no joy. Jesus came so that, 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 that even when we find ourselves going through, we can look at our neighbors and say, I still Come on, God. got joy. All right. Jesus came to bring that joy, but, but for this world to have and keep that joy, we, we too must bring some joy. Right. You see, people don't fight each other when there is joy. Uh, people don't hate each other when there is joy. People don't hurt one another when there is joy. Right. Jesus brought us joy, and it is time for us to bring some joy into this world, to this world that, that we live in. Amen. So I ask that you pray with me. Y'all going to pray with me? Amen. I ask that you pray with me as I, I share from the subject, bringing joy to the world. Bringing joy to the world. This passage in Philippians has no Christmas story tied to it. But for some reason, it has been placed amongst the lectionary passages during this Advent season. Though it is not tied directly to a Christmas story, I can't help but see that Tends to determine for us how happy. 
happy we are. Some of our happiness will be determined by who spend who we spend our time with or, or how sweet and, and kind they are to us personally. Amen. Now know that I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with any of this. There is nothing wrong with being happy. But today's message isn't about finding happiness. It's about finding joy. See, someone may have it in their minds that, that happiness and, and joy are, are the same thing, but, 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 but we need to know today that they may be distant cousins, but they definitely are not the same thing. A lot of people who, who, who have gotten divorced were, were, were once happily married, but those who have joy in their marriages don't get divorced. Oh, y'all are to with me today. Happiness floats on the surface of our lives and is easily disturbed by the storms of life. It is disturbed by external events. But happiness is situational. Joy, on the other hand, resides so deep within the soul that nothing can disturb it. True joy endures through disaster. It endures through disappointment. It endures through loss. Yeah. Happiness centers on self. Okay. While joy finds expression in relationships and in serving others. Right. Happiness is temporary. Amen. But joy is eternal. So the only way for, for us to have real joy is to have Jesus. That, that you may rejoice in the Lord always and be glad in him. There is nothing anyone can do to you when your joy is established in Jesus. Yo, you can lose your job and not be sad when you got joy. You can lose a loved one and have peace because you got it. Joy. The doctor can come in the room and give you a bad report and it won't phase you because you got yourself some joy. Happiness can turn to sadness, but can't nothing stop your joy. So rejoice the Lord always so that you can get and keep your joy. Be reminded that we aren't just getting this joy for ourselves. We ought to have so much joy that we can't keep it to ourselves. So the second thing I see that will help us bring joy to the world is to let your gentleness be evident to all. When the Messiah came to this world, he came as a babe, a gentle lamb. Yeah. As he aged, when, when he in, in, encountered people, he, he did so with respect and dignity. Right. People who, who, who have become confrontational with him went as far as abusing him physically and with their words. Enduring all of this, Jesus let his gentleness be evident to all. Y'all, we are quick to let it be known what somebody did to us. Amen, somebody. But but if we were to really take time to read our Bibles, we would see that the what see we would see what the people did to our Lord was far worse than what other folk doing to us. If that is not enough for you, all we need to do is look at the people we see every day, and, and that's even including the one we see in the mirror, and we will still see what people are doing wrong to our Lord. All right. Yet, he continues to let his gentleness be evident to all. When we use his name in vain and do everything that he says not to do, his gentleness 
is it still being revealed to all? Donald Trump would have probably been a better president if he would have let some gentleness be evident to all instead of set, uh, 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 select few. His supporters even held his, 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 held his lack of gentleness against him. ISIS wouldn't have to keep attacking everybody and blowing up everything if, if they would let their gentleness be evident to all. People who cause conflict in, in, in the church would rid the church of all conflict if they would let their gentleness be evident to all. You may say, Pastor, these people have so much hate in them that there is no gentleness in them. But I begin this message by reminding us that as long as Jesus is somewhere standing by, as long as he is somewhere in the vicinity, anything is possible. Amen. Well, watch this. The writer of this letter to these Philippians once led a life just like ISIS. He was just like the church folk who caused conflict in the church. He would stir up the fight, then go stand over in the corner and hold the coat. Everybody else did the fight. Ain't that how we do it? Amen. Amen. Like, he sought happiness because he sought self gratification. But one day, oh, help me, go. As Saul walked along the Damascus Road, set up to kill followers of Christ, Jesus was somewhere standing by. It was at that time that the man who would be known as Paul rejoiced in the Lord always. It was that moment when Jesus was standing by that this man, Paul, unclothed himself of the evil he had been wearing then and, 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 and let his gentleness be evident to all. I, I know that sometimes you, 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 you may have to, to show your tough side to, to, so people won't run up with you. Amen, somebody. But, but if you want to bring joy to the world, somebody needs to see your gentle side here now and then. Amen. Paul said, you can't be nice to folks at the job, then come to the church and raise in hell. Amen, somebody. He said that you can't go to your mama house being nice to her and then go home and treat your wife any kind of way. He said, let your gentleness be evident to all. We can't have joy picking who we can and will be nice to. Amen. To have joy, we need to know how to be nice to everybody. The last thing I see to help us bring joy to the world is to not allow ourselves to be anxious about anything. We spend so much time worrying about stuff that our spirit has no room for joy. Oh, somebody get what I see. We need to understand that joy and worry can't take residence in the same place. In thinking of this, my mind easily goes to, to when I had cancer and how people still today tell me that how me being sick encouraged them. Amen. There I was sick, not knowing if the disease would beat me or if I would beat the disease. Y'all, right. but I had joy. Uh, Pastor, how, 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 how did you know that you had joy? I, I know that I had joy because no matter how sick the treatments made me, no matter how tired I got, no matter how weak I got, no matter what the doctors told me, no matter how much others doubted, I rejoiced in the Lord because 
like Jesus. And could nobody do me like the Lord. I, I could have worried like others have worried, but the Bible teaches me that so do not worry, saying, what shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or, 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 or what shall, shall I wear? For, for the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. Amen. You're trying to get that nice car. But you ain't got to worry about going to get it. The Lord knows you need it. He's going to get it for you. Amen. The word says that the father has it already taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. We round here worrying about how to make our ends meet. When we ought to be more concerned with how we're going to meet our ends. Oh, somebody hear that? Somebody need to tweet that right there. I need to say that again. We, we around here worried about how we gonna make our ends meet. When we ought to be more concerned about how we gonna meet our end. Jesus told us to do it when he told us, or how to do it when he told us. But seek first. His king and his righteousness and all these things. Somebody say all things. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Worry has never gotten anybody anywhere. What it has done is kept you from having your joy. Amen. It has kept you from being the blessing that the Lord brought you into this world for you to be. So, so I challenge you today to get your hat, get your coat, and leave your worries on the doorstep. That your joy can be made evident to you. That, 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 so that same joy can be made evident to the world. I'm going to leave this alone, y'all. Thank you, Paul shared these thoughts with us that we may live lives more in line with what God intended for us. Yeah. The Lord wants us to live joyous lives. He knows it won't be easy. Therefore, he makes himself available to us. Yeah. Paul reminds us that the Lord is there for us yeah. and, and that we should make our requests known to him and do it with thanksgiving in our hearts. Yeah. We need to know to thank him for what he did, yeah. thank him for what he's doing, and thank him in advance for we, what we know that he's going to do. Thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to be thanking him for the joy that is about to come. Amen. You might not know what that joy is, but you're going to thank God in advance because joy coming in the morning. Though, Lord, I, I've had some happy times, but, but today I'm looking for some joy. Some, some of that unspeakable joy, that, that joy that can make a legless man want to get up and ruin it out. And that, that joy that can make a, a cancer-sensitive body feel clean on the inside. That, that joy that can make a jobbing man want to get up and do some work when you ain't got nowhere to go. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm talking about that soul-saving joy. Yeah. I'm talking about that wonder-working joy. Yeah. I'm talking about that life. Change and joy. We 
a while back, way back some years. And, and then somebody went home and picked the song, This Joy Now. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I need to know that, that anybody want that kind of joy. Oh, y'all ain't about, I ain't preach hard enough. I didn't know that if you want some joy, let me mean, say, yeah. yeah. Say, yeah. yeah. Say, yeah. yeah. I get a little order here, come for it. I didn't plan this, but this joy that has set the world. Everything right? No. But the main thing 
get see how because if if it cash, you might spend it on something else when you get home. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Now, now for those who are not paying by check or giving by check or or money order or ca or cash, we have online options available to you, and I invite you to give using them. The first one being Cash App, which you can do so by sending it to dollar sign Trinity CME, or you can use PayPal. You send it to Trinity CME Uptown at gmail.com. But if you still need to send it uh, by money order or by check, please mail it to Trinity CME Church, P.O. Box 170561, Birmingham, Alabama. Three five two one seven. You can't be God's gift, no matter how hard you try. Let us bow. Father God, right now we bless your name and we say thank you. We thank you, God, for the gifts that we are about to receive. God, may they be used for the building up of your kingdom, God. I want you to ask that those God who have, have chosen. Give God, we just ask that you bless them in a mighty way that, that, that they will know and continue to realize that all of their help, all of our help, comes from you. Everything that we have is yours, and we're just taking this time to, to bless you back with some of what you have given to us in advance. So, Lord, we just ask that as we prepare God to lead this worship experience. As we prepare God to go into whatever this week has in store for us, that you continue to guide us, that you continue to keep us, that you continue to hold us and don't let go, that, that we will go down that straight and narrow path that we spoke of last week, God, uh, we're prepared to follow you, God, to the end. And when we follow you to the end, God, we know that's only the, the beginning because we've made it to that place call him. So God, we just ask you to cover us, to guide us, and that you keep us. We love you, and we know that you love us. We give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. We thank you all for, for being a part of this worship experience on the day. We just ask that as you go out into this week that you take the Lord with you. Allow him to be your guide. Put your trust in him that your hope may be in him. That one day we can meet him on the other show. As you go, go with God. Remember always that this pastor loves you and there's nothing that you can do about it. But as you do all of that, I ask that you do it with Jesus' joy and do it with peace.